open your Bibles, uh, and he's been a pastor for over 30 years, but open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. No, he's not an African-American. He's an African-African. <laughs> Amen. Look what it says here in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. I'm going to read this to you, and we want to talk about some important subjects this morning. This is what it says here, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are where? In Christ Jesus. Them are in Christ Jesus. Now notice it doesn't say them who have Jesus Christ. Them who are in, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. They're not pursuing the flesh. That's what we're talking about, being hungry for God. They're pursuing the spirit. They're going after the things of the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit, say the law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Now, I want to talk about the spirit of life in Christ Jesus this morning, but I, I want to approach it this way. You know, there's, there's uh, many, many laws. There are spiritual laws. There's what we call the laws of nature, the laws of science, and the laws of men. Those laws are in effect whether you agree with them or not. Laws are laws. Law, laws there's biblical spiritual laws. For instance, in Genesis... Uh, we see the first law is this. It, it, it says that every seed produces after its own kind. That has been established. In other words, if you plant a pear tree, a, a pear seed or a peach seed or a banana seed, it will produce a tree, and if it gets to the right age of maturity, it will produce peaches, apples, or bananas. You, you never have an apple seed that grows an apple tree that produces peaches. It's called the law of Genesis. Cats always produce cats. Dogs always produce... Uh, now, men get to messing around, and they try to interbreed and mess with this stuff, you know? Uh, so they can mess it up some, but it's the law. It's a law. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's grass seed... It doesn't, every, everything starts as a seed. It doesn't matter. A uh, goldfish, you'll never wake up in the morning, and if you had a pregnant goldfish, it will not give birth to baby sharks. Everything produces after its own kind, whether you agree with it or not. You don't have to worry if you plant a seed for lettuce that you're going to get carrots. So if you've been worrying about that, stop it. Everything produces after its own kind. That's the law of Genesis. God established all laws. Now, when I say all laws, what I mean by that is the natural laws, the spiritual laws, and even he established governmental laws. Now, people will uh, abuse it, twist it, misuse it. You know, a lot of people think the Ten Commandments are done away with. No, those, those are laws. Th those laws, believe it or not, will be in operation throughout eternity. Throughout eternity, we'll, you will not comfort your neighbor's good. Throughout eternity, you will not commit adultery. Throughout eternity, you will worship the Lord thy God and him only. Throughout eternity. Well, what about the Sabbath? Well, I found out the Sabbath is a person. Whether people like that or not. Because he's, 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 uh, I had a guy, uh, because I put a video up and this guy really went after me this week. And I just said, fine. And I quoted the scripture where Paul said, Paul said, because people get us so upset over this subject. And, and I, I, said, I, I said to him, I said, yeah, listen, if you want to work, if you want to take one day as the Sabbath, that's fine. I'm not against that. But to be honest with you, 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 you're not keeping the Sabbath the way that the Bible requires you to in the Old Covenant. Any of you ever studied the, the, what it says in Deuteronomy and Leviticus when it comes to the Sabbath? Actually, if you were really, really keeping the Sabbath holy the way the Bible teaches, I'm telling you right now, uh, uh, we'd all be in trouble. Because nobody is. Study it. But that's a whole different subject. But there are laws of God. There are eternal laws. For instance, whether you believe it or not, this is a law. The law of forgiveness. Forgive 
and you will be forgiven. God established that law. You don't forgive? Well, I can't forgive. No, that's why you need Jesus. He is the great forgiver. You've got the seed of Jesus in you. You've got the DNA of Jesus in you. Do you know that? Your body is considered dirt. Say dirt. Your body is considered dirt. When you got born again, that was the seed of Christ planted in you. And what's the last thing he said on the cross? Father, forgive them. Well, he said, into thy hands. But Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So you've got the seed of forgiveness in you if you choose to exercise it. Forgiven it shall be, you will be forgiven. There's another law. People don't believe these laws. I can't help it. For instance, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Now that law, I know that's dealing with the relationship. So I, I, you got to learn this law. You give, you give people problems. You're ugly, nasty, mean, short-tempered. It is coming back to hit you in the head like a boomerang. Now maybe the person you're dealing with is like a Joseph that isn't going to respond to it. For other words, maybe you're dumping your your, your, your self-righteous attitude on them, ugliness, meanness, fault-finding, backstabbing, and, they don't, and you don't have to let that in you. But that person, it will come back to get them. It's going to come back. That's a spiritual law. Given it shall be given unto you. There's also a, a law when it comes to finances. There really is if you have faith. And even the world, you know what, there, there's people in the world who are not Christians and they, and they will tell you the reason why they're so prosperous is because they give to good charitable things. They help the poor. The, there's a law that says if you help the needy, God will help you. It don't matter if you're a Christian or not. God says if you help the poor, I will help you. I, I really do, I say this in love. Because it's a law. God's not a respect your people. How many of you know if, if there's natural laws? If I'm driving down a road and I'm speeding and, and, and I'm breaking a law, if there's a law enforcement officer there, he's going to pull me over and give me a ticket. I broke the law. Well, I don't believe in the law. He'll be in jail. Well, I have to. You ain't going to put me in legalism. Well, I ain't going to put you in legalism. I'm telling you, you're going to pay the price. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. I, I thought a long time ago, my wife is a garden. And if I, want, if I don't want stink, stink weeds and thistles and, and, and briars, I need to plant the right seed in her. A soft word turneth away wrath. Gentleness, kindness, meekness. Long suffering, loving. Why well, that woman just don't love me? Why well, I know why? Because you're not loving her. I'm preaching good now. There's laws, whether you accept it or not. There's all now. E even so, there's the laws of God, the laws of the spirit. There's the laws of nature, seed time and harvest, and and there's the laws of governments. Uh, some natural laws, and, and you, I don't know if you know this, there's all kinds of laws in the scientific world. The, the laws of mechanics, the laws of gravitation and relativity, uh, the laws of aerodynamic, or what goes up must come down. Whether you believe it or not, there's the laws of aerodynamic, and it always works. It all, listen, the law of aerodynamics overcomes the law of gravitation. How many know what the law of gravitation is? <laughs> What goes up must come down. There's all of the universe, there's gravity. Do you know scientists cannot still explain to you what gravity is? Well, it's because you're spinning so fast it makes you magnetic. No, no. You ever spin something so fast everything flies off of it? I mean, if you've got one of them lazy Susies in the middle of your, of your dining room table and you fill it full of all kinds of spices and give it a spin and see how much stuff hangs on there. It's, it's, a, it's a dynamic law. I think it is the law where God upholds all things by the power of his word. Did you know there, there's a scripture that says, 
the law that the word of the king is law. Matter of fact, remember when the king said that uh, the Israelites could be uh, destroyed by uh, Haman? He wrote it as a law. Remember when the king said that whoever didn't bow down and worship me for the next so many days would be thrown into the lion's den? He loved Daniel, but because he made that law, it was established and he could not break that law. The only thing is when Daniel stepped into the lion's den, he stepped into he was operating in another law that overrode the law of the hunger in those lions' bellies. There's another law. There's spiritual laws, laws of nature, laws of science, laws of men, and the law. And you know what? For years and years, we've seen birds, right? Birds overcame the law of gravitation. They were operating in another law. But until approximately 1803, the Wright brothers, we, we had powered flight, did not overcome that law. Now, we could have overcame that law of gravitation all of those previous, you know, uh, 4,000 years almost. But we didn't have the technology. We didn't have the, the, the creativity. We, we didn't have, we didn't have, you know what? There is a law called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that law will overcome the law of sin and death. So I, 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 there's other kinds of laws. There's the law of thermodynamics, the law of electromagnetism, the law of photonics, the law of quantum mechanics. How many ever hear of, 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 of quantum mechanics? I mean, these are weird, strange laws, but they are laws. Laws of chemistry, geophysical laws. I mean, there's all kinds of laws. In the, in the Bible, the, the word law is used 529 times. In the Old Covenant, it talks about the law 319 times. In the New Covenant, it talks about the law 210 times. I'm not under the law. What law are you not under? What law are you not under? There's all kinds of laws. Did you know there's a law called the royal law? The royal law? Did you know there's the Bible in the New Testament talks about the law of faith? The law of faith. The law of liberty. There's a law called the law of liberty. How many of you want to walk in the wall in the law of liberty? What's liberty? Freedom. Freedom. The word of God. Remember, the word of a king is law. And God and, G, and he's the king, kings and the Lord of Lords. So one day the king said, the king said, let there be light. And there was light. And he began to call things that be not as though they were, and that law made it come to pass. Did you know those laws that God used to create everything have been given to you? There is a law of confession in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. The law says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, the law says he will, she will have whatsoever they say. Now, because that, that, that law operates in the realm of faith, it can only be appropriated in faith. We'll, we'll see this in much greater detail in a minute. But there's laws, whether you agree with it or not, whether you believe with it or not, whether you're operating or not, now, this, these law, you're going to be operating in, in, in laws. Either you submit to the law. When the Bible says, sub, I, I preached on Thursday. You ought to watch the sermon. It, it's up there. And, and, and I, I named it a must-listen-to sermon. Because there is a scripture, if you do it, that will give you the victory over every work of the enemy. A scripture. You know what that is? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will 
flee from you. That means to run in terror. <laughs> the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise this simple. No, I'm not under the Levitical laws. God's given me dynamic laws, though. And, and matter of fact, God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night. And you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Man, these are laws. Uh, you know, there's some people who know how to use the law. I know people get really upset over people who have all kinds of loops. They get out paying taxes. I'm not against them not paying taxes. If I knew the laws I could get out of paying taxes, I would use those laws. How many of you would do that? I would use them. Why? They're put there for people who know the law. The law is not your enemy if you use it right. It can be your best friend. So these laws are so, so important, and they're operating. You And there's laws we are ignoring that we could be using to further the kingdom of God. We, we could use the laws of God to further the kingdom. One, one area that, that I, I stepped into as a baby Christian was, and I didn't realize it was, cast your bread upon the waters, and it will come back after many days. It's a law that works. Um, now, let, let me talk about a couple more things here because I found that these are the laws I found in the New Testament which need to be applied in our lives. The law of faith, the law of love, the law of life, the law of God, the law of righteousness. There is a law of righteousness. I was talking about Thursday night that uh, people really, a lot of preachers, we just need to spend more time in the Bible. Don't know their Bible. Well, you know, well, I, I, uh, the righteousness of God is in me. It's been conferred upon me. No, there is a conferred righteousness and an apprehended righteousness. The moment you get born again, God's righteousness is conferred upon you. But now by faith, you need to apprehend it. What do you mean? You need to learn. You need to begin to walk like Jesus walked live like Jesus lived, talk like Jesus talked, and do what Jesus did. That is an apprehended righteousness. I'll show you this. The moment you got born again, the Bible says you were healed. The minute you got born again, the Bible says you were blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The Bible says when you got born again, you became an heir and joint heir, and that means all the provisions you could ever need have already been provided. How many know these things are true? Now, that, 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 them are conferred blessings, but now you got to apprehend them. <laughs> See, that makes me happy, man. Because sometimes when, when you go, oh, my God, you, you said they're already mine, and, and, and I can't seem to get a hold of them. Well, where are they? God, are you a liar? And then people teach other doctors, well, I guess it wasn't God's will. No, you didn't know how to apprehend. You didn't know how to operate in the law of faith. You didn't know how to operate in the law of liberty. You didn't know how to operate in the law of life in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm here to help you to learn, and I'm learning how to operate in these laws. And they work. Say, praise the Lord. You ought to be excited. These are things available for you and me. They are there. Now, go back there to Romans chapter 8, and look there once again at Romans chapter 8. In verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, there is a law called sin and death. When Adam and his wife lived in the garden of Eden, the garden of abundance, they were operating in the law of life. 
The whole earth operated in the law of life. Life, everywhere you looked, zoe life. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Right? Where's the abundant life? That's zoe life, life as God has it. So when God created this earth, there was no, he said it was very good, no blights, no poverties, no deserts, no, no death. We were talking the other day. I said, do you think the fish... When God made them, they never died. If you would have been in the Garden of Eden and you would have had a pet dog or a pet uh, a tiger, that's kind of neat, right? A pet, whatever, whatever kind of, because he had authority over all the animals. And, and your pet right there, and I know the day will come, Jackie, and, and I hate to break your heart, but that little dog, puppy of yours is going to leave. It's one day it's going to breathe its last breath. But if you had that puppy in the Garden of Eden, that puppy would have never died. Never died. Never. What? Do you know what? I'm telling you what. Now, if you had a honeybee in the Garden of Eden, that honeybee would have never died. There was no death. We can't comprehend that because everything dies. Wait, fall comes and the leaves die. They fall off, right? And, 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 I mean, everything dies in this world, but in the garden, there was, in the earth, in creation, there was no death. Everything was operating under the law of life. So what happened? When man entered into sin, death came. All of the earth came under, and creation came under the curse of the law of sin and death. No, no, all of creation is under the law of sin and death right now, all of creation. Now, the day is going to come where it stops, but all of creation is under the law of sin and death. What does that mean, sin and death? It is... Death operates in sin. And that's why these, these preachers say, Oh, my sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. No, no, you'll understand. If you're operating in sin, you're operating under the law of sin and death. Notice what the scripture Paul said. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's a law on the whole human race right now. It's called the law of sin and death. The only ones that can get out from under that law is those who are born again. So listen to this. Only those who are born again. Now, what you can do as a believer, if you're walking in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, because you are a king under the king, and the word of the king is law, you can lay your hands on people who have been affected by the law of sin and death, and you can get them healed. You can get them delivered. You can get them set free because you're operating in another law. If you're operating in a law, and the more I operate in a law of life in Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The more I operate under that law of the Spirit, what? Walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, thinking in the Spirit, talking in the Spirit, Doing the spirit, the spirit of life, the word of God, submitted to God, the more authority I have, and I can kick out the law of sin and death. I mean, I can, I mean, the law of sin and death could have completed its dirty, dastardly deed and killed a person. And I can operate under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and raise that dead person back to life again. Jesus was operating in the law of the spirit of life. He, lepers were cleansed. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the dead were raised. I mean, the law of life in Christ Jesus will turn water into wine. 
the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus will cause you to be to walk on water. Or, listen to this now, this is where the devil has got to keep you out of this law. See, it's like the law of aerodynamics. When you're operating in the law of aerodynamics, honey, you overcome the law of gravitation. It takes some time. I used to be a pilot. I was thinking about this. What's the percentage of people do you know that are operating in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus? I don't know. I, I, now, we all, as born-again believers, you operate in it to some extent. I think it's like the water coming under the, the, the threshold of the Holy of Holies. You, you might be ankle deep or knee deep or waist deep, but how many people are operating over their heads in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus? Jesus lived in that law of the spirit of life. He never did nothing of the flesh. He never, the sinful nature which was in his body because he was born in likeness. As a matter of fact, it goes on. Read the rest of what it says there, Romans chapter 8. I'm going to show you this. This is so powerful. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made, Paul said this, it hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that's talking about the Levitical laws, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned what? Sin in the flesh. The word condemned in the Greek means to shut it down. To exterminate it. How many of you have ever had cockroaches in your house and you had to bring an exterminator in? I See, I'm an exterminator, man. I'm going to come in and exterminate anything in your heart, in your mind, in your life that is against the will of God. Amen. Because, see, those nasty little cockroaches, man, they'll spread diseases. I mean, they'll just make your environment unlivable, right? Or spiders or whatever, termites or whatever it may be. But see, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Jesus came to shut down the law of sin and death in me. In me. To the extent that I operate in the spiritual laws of love and faith and righteousness, the law of truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And here's the wonderful kicker. Maybe nobody around you wants to operate in the law of life, but you can. You can't. Listen, I, I, I used to be a pilot, and I was interested. I thought, okay, uh, how many people are pilots in the world? Right? I mean, hear this. We, we, we overcame the law of gravity. A lot of people have flown in planes, but I was shocked. Do you know what? I think out of all the population of the world, less than 3, like 0.3% have ever been in a plane. 0.3%, not 3%, 0.3%. But then I got to thinking, well, how many private pilots are there in America out of 300, 300 320 million people, right? I thought, how many pilots? I thought, well, I know it's not 10% because that, that means we would have 30 million private pilots. I, I thought, well, maybe 1%, which would be 3 million private pilots. Now, the law, you, anybody can become a private pilot. You just got to discover what the laws are. Listen, to become a private pilot, you got to step into the law. Okay? I thought maybe, maybe... Maybe 1% of the American population, that would be like uh, uh, 300,000 people. Guess what? I found out that it's 0.05%. Only 162,000 out of 320 million have their private pilot license. That means that law is there, but people aren't interested in it. And I was thinking, oh, Lord, that's like the church. The church, even though Jesus died and rose again and gave you his word, gave you his spirit, his nature, his character, his power, his authority, his provisions, in the church in America and around the world, what percentage are operating in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus? Smith Wigglesworth did. 
Mary Woodworth Adder did, to some extent, what not Paul said, I have not yet apprehended that for which I've been apprehended. I've been apprehended to walk in that law of liberty, that law, that law of, of freedom, freedom, no fear. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. The law of provision, provision. Like three years ago, when we had a small crowd here Sunday morning, and there was a small handful of 20s, and I began to count them out. By the time I got done, I had a pile of 22 hundred twenties, $2,200 of twenties, and there was only a small pile there. I was operating in the law of faith. Now, to get born again, you had to operate in the law of faith. You had to. You just got to take it further. You got to take it farther. You got to take it deeper. You got to take it high. Man, I am excited when I saw this. I said, what is preventing me now, if nobody else, because, see, I can bring light. That's what, that's what Smith Wigglesworth did. He'd shut down schools of the blind. He'd shut down schools for the insane. He, I mean, homes for the insane. I mean, he, he'd go in and shut down hospitals. I mean, can you imagine? And every one of you are candidates gets to operate in this law of life. Tell somebody, I can do that. I can operate in the law of faith, the law of love, the law of liberty, the law of the freedom. Now, what do you think he'll, he'll pat his arm? That was the law of life in Christ Jesus. What do you think was his healing mom with her knees that the doctor said there's no hope for? What do you think uh, healed S Sister Sandra when she had that cancer and that thyroid? Come on, man. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Somebody operating in that law. Somebody's got to operate in this law. S shout out, somebody. Was that a shout? <laughs> somebody. So say, that's going to be me. You can operate in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It has made me free from the law of sin and death. I don't have to be a slave to my flesh any longer. The sun sets free is free indeed. And that's where the early church came. They got to the place. Now, if, you step, if you're in a plane and you're overcoming the law of gravitation, you step out of the plane, you're plummeting back. Now, it's going to take some time for you. Before It kind of reminds me of two window washers that were washing at the top of the Empire State Building. They're window washers. They're up there and all of a sudden something happened and, and, and it broke and they both were falling. And they're headed towards the ground. But the one guy, he was kind of stupid. He was crying out, so far, so good. So far, so good. I mean, no, it was, it, it's not falling from a skyscraper that will kill you. It's a sudden impact. See, and so people, you can get into the law. How many have ever, don't raise your hands, you ever been deeper with God than you are right now? And then you fell out of that plane. And if you keep on, if you don't get back into that law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the day will come when you have an impact and it ain't going to be very nice. Get back into the spirit. I, I told you uh, amazing stories. I, I uh, was living with the Yupik Indians and they have what they call a McKay and a McKay is a, like an underground hut. And uh, uh, what they do is they, they, they build a hut, could be wood, and they dig a pit and they put a 55-gallon oil drum in there and they put a stack on it with the door. And they put tundra over the top of it to keep the heat in. And then what they do is they put wood floors, rough wood flooring, and they have a, like a small dressing room to go in. You take off all your clothes, the guys, and you go in and there's a bench and, there's, and, and they get it hot. They really get it hot and, and to where the stone's almost red. And they get in there and they, have a, a, they take a two-by-four with a coffee can. You pick Indians, you know nothing fancy, and they put it in a bucket. And you sit in there, and you have a and you have a bucket of water next to you. Dip your washcloth in and put it over your face because it gets hot. You think saunas are hot? You never had a sauna until you get one of these puppies. And they go in there and they dump the water. And when they dump the water, that steam hits you and it makes you feel like your flesh is uh, getting off of your skin. And they have contests, and they literally die. They'll pass out, fall on the hot red stones. Uh, or they'll crawl out of there before, or they'll get burnt terribly. And, and a lot of what times what they do is like they, they cut a hole in if it's next to a lake or river, they'll, they'll dip themselves in. It gives you this overwhelming like a buzz. It's almost like narcotics. 
and, or you're rolling your, in the snow. So I'm a 19-year-old kid. I'm the only Christian, one of the only, only white men out there in this village. I'm trying to share Jesus with them. And they're picking on me. They're, when we're eating, they don't know how to cook. Or, uh, maybe they changed it now. But when we when we shoot ducks, they would just take all the parts of the duck, right? And they boil them all. Now, they didn't eat all of it, but they gave me the duck head, the duck guts, and the duck feet. What did you do, Pastor Mike? I ate. Why? The law says whatever is put in front of you, eat it when you're in someone else's house. That's why it says, even if you know someone's trying to poison you, because I've read stories where people purposely tried to poison people and the poison didn't hurt them. That isn't you drinking poison. That's someone who poisoned you because they hate you. So one day they're going to have a McKay. And they said to me, they said, come on, Mike, three young guys and an old guy. Come on, Mike, let's go have a McKay. Let's go, let's go take a steam bath. And the Lord said to me, he said, they're going to try to mock you and chase you out. He said, just stay in the spirit. So I started praying in tongues right away. How many know praying in tongues is a wonderful thing? So I started praying in tongues real low. We got in there, and the old guy was, uh, it was like the old guy, me, and, and the three other young guys. About my age, in their 20s, I was 19. And they poured on, and they're all snickering. I know what they're doing. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Here comes the heat. Didn't bother me. Here comes the heat. They're getting mad. Here comes, they're dumping up more. Because, man, them guys have been doing it their whole life. I'm just a stupid white kid who's preaching Jesus to them. Man, they got, they, I mean, they've got, they've, got, they've got something to prove, you know. We're going to chase this kid out. I'm there, and the Lord told me that's what they were doing. So I'm praying in tongues. I'm in the spirit, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The heat ain't affecting me. They're dumping it. They're dumping it. I can, I can feel them getting aggravated. Finally, one of the young guys couldn't handle it. He runs out the door, and the door slams. Boom. You know? So just me and the old guy and two young guys. They keep pouring it. Man, they're burning up. I can tell they're full of pain. I'm praying in the spirit. It's like a cold breeze blowing over me. The other guy runs out. Boom. Man, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And then the next guy runs out. And I look over and hear the old guy. He looks like a walrus. A, 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 is that right? No teeth. He smiles at me. His, his skin is like leather all wrinkled. I'm not exaggerating. They could make a movie about this. Next thing you know, he's dumping it. He's dumping it. He can't move me. I, for a moment, it felt like my flesh was coming off of my bones, but I got back in the spirit. I'm, in a, I'm operating in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I don't have a spirit of fear. I'm in the will of God. has nothing to do with pride. I know what they're up to. They're persecuting me. Next thing I know, I hear this humongous. He, he, I don't know if he took the whole bucket and threw it on there. Threw it on there. Man, the waves up. You ever get your face over a steaming bucket on the stove? You go, whoa, it'll peel the skin off your face. It hit me like that. Fear hit me. And I felt like the skin because he ran. And I ran for the door and I grabbed it. I could not open it. They locked it on me. And I mean, and the Lord said to me, get in the spirit. Get in the spirit. Get in. And I started praying in tongues right away. I fell on the floor, and it felt like a cold breeze rushing over my naked body. I'm laying there. Glory of God's all over me. And after a while, I checked the door. It was open, and they never said a word to me. Give the Lord a hand clap. Listen. Listen. I'm not bragging about me. 19-year-old kid. I had learned how to walk in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's why I tell you, when I've gone to countries like the Philippines, I cannot take most people with me. They could not survive. Why? Because you've got to operate in the law of the spirit of life. When them communists were there to kill us, I took one young husky guy with me one time. He was like a Marine. I had to cut my meeting two weeks to a week short to get him back to the state back to the states because he was going to die he couldn't handle all that was going on but it's the law of the spirit it's not me it's jesus in me it wasn't smith wigglesworth it was jesus in smith wigglesworth 
for the law of the spirit of life. You know, a fish out of water, it's going to flop around, but it will die. Let me tell you something. If you get out of walking in the spirit, if you in this generation, if you don't know how to walk in the spirit when it comes to divine healing, you're going home early. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But why go home early? I don't want to go home early. I want to give as much. I want to give the devil as much hell as I can before he gets it forever. Can I say? I just said that. I want to cause the devil. As, I want to see as many people set free as I can. And I know this. I've seen people set free, but nothing compared to what can happen if I will buckle down, get my nose where it belongs, and stay. Now, all kinds of demonic powers are trying to get me out of the will of God, trying to get me into sin, sin as unbelief, out of the will of God, because that's where the law of sin and death is operating. Now, you understand, only the believers can operate in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You know you are ordained to walk in in that realm if you're born again you are called to walk in this higher realm of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus Jesus said the thief comes but to steal to kill and destroy I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly Zoe life this kind of divine life that I'm talking about that's the life I'm talking about where a gasoline fire cannot burn you you're standing in a brush fire and it cannot burn you. A woman stabbing you in the face with a knife and that can't kill you. Slamming on a motorcycle doing 45 miles an hour and there is nothing but rocks and, 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 and my wife and my pregnant wife and my son Michael sitting between us and the law of the spirit of life right before I hit the rocks and I hit the telephone pole and the guardrail. The power of God hit us and we ran into a bed of feathers and fell over. I've got a book back there God still protects. You can read about it. 60 stories, 60 stories, 60 stories. That's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's where you're meant to walk. That's where, that's where you're meant to live. That's where you're meant to function. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I can't get there, Pastor Mike. You're operating in a law of sin and death when you think that thought. That's not the law of life. The law, the, the word of God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can get into that realm. Well, overnight? No, not overnight, but one step at a time. Just take one step. I know we've all done it. You take one step forward and you take three steps back. Because I know what the devil does. He's there to try to get you out of that realm. But I'm telling you right now by the Holy Ghost, before everything is said and dead in this generation, the body of Christ will be walking in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And we will be free from the law of sin and death. We will be operating there. See, there's what we call the new man and the old man. The new man operates in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The old man operates in the law of sin and death. Now, my heart goes out to those who don't know Jesus. Man, they're just, they're just slaves of the devil. They're slaves of their flesh. They're slaves of their emotions. They're slaves of their circumstances. Their cir circumstances control them. But listen, as a believer, your circumstances should not move you. Your, your, your body shouldn't move you. You know what I'll move you? is the word of God and the spirit of God. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God wants you to move by the Holy Ghost, by the word of God. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited about my future. I'm excited about my tomorrow. Are you? I'm excited because I have not yet reached the limit of what God has for me, and it's not too late. Do you know why it's not too late? I'm still breathing. I'm still breathing. Mom, maybe the world said it was too late because your kneecaps are worn out, but look what the law of the spirit of life is doing in you, Mom. She can't. I saw she has the biggest smile I've ever seen her head since I've known her. Look at her. She is so happy. That's what the law of the spirit of life does. Look at Patty. Look what the law of the spirit of life does for you. 
He puts a smile on your face. <laughs> but people who don't know Jesus, they're under the law of sin and death. But as a believer, one who has faith in God, man, I should not be operating under the law of sin and death. So the old man, he's under the law of sin and death. You know what the Bible, well, when I got born again, the old man died. No, he didn't. That, then listen what it says, and we'll close here. Ephesians 4.22, that you put off con concerning the former conversa conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You know why the devil just minimizes the sin in your life? Not that we're zeroing on it, but we got to deal with it. The sin in my heart. Because if he can keep you in sin, you're under the law of sin and death. I didn't say you're not saved. But you'll never have the impact. One plumber by the name of Smith Wigglesworth changed the world in his generation, and he's still doing it. One plumber who was not living for God, he was saved, but he was just a carnal Christian. And when he got into his late 40s, he got tired of being carnal. Don't wait until you're in your 40s. If you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, it's not too late. But you young people, don't wait. But it's, I'm telling you what, the church is coming back into it. Listen. Colossians 3 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Romans 6 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that you henceforth should not serve sin. People, they don't understand. It's only because of disobedience to the will of God that the law of death came into existence. Listen, until Lucifer sinned, there was no death. No death. No death. Not the smell of death, not the look of death. Matter of fact, the grass never withered, it never died. When a flower blossomed, it, it was like that way forever. Now, can you imagine... I'm telling you, after everything is completed, after the manifestation of the sons of God, we're coming back into that realm of life forever. No, for eternity. Right now, we got planets out there that are dead. I'm not convinced that those planets, they're nothing but dead hunks of rock. I'm not convinced they were dead until after man sinned. It affected even the heavens. I know I've never heard anybody teach this theology. I won't be surprised because when they look at Mars, they go, well, there had to be rivers on it at one time. Oh, there's ravines, there's this, there's that. It looked like there was life on Mars. I believe before man sinned, Mars could have been brimming with life. The whole universe, the whole solar system was full of life. But sin brought death to the universe and even to heaven and to this earth. He said, oh, Pastor Mike, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, then I'll have life. No. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, let's just talk about this before we close. What kind of life, Pastor Mike? Well, how many have ever had holy joy? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's life. How, how many of you have ever experienced a service where your heart was just so overwhelmed with thanksgiving and love and God's presence was so real that you... How many have ever had touch of God where you said, God, I can't, I can't handle anymore? I can't handle it. I mean, ever, how many have ever had that experience? Jesus said, it was so, the life of God was so awesome. You go, oh, God, it's going to kill me. It's so good. That was Zoe life. How many know that's what revival is? How many you know that in the book of Acts, it says the cities were filled with great joy? Now, I just want you to picture this because this is what's coming. Cities, whole cities were filled with great joy. 
I tell you, there was so much life in the early church where James had to say, if there is any sick among you, if there is, I'm telling you, man, it's going to come suddenly. Life is, and said, so out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Jesus said, I am the well of life. Let me ask you something. How many of you got Jesus in your heart today? Let me see your hand. You're not ashamed. Let me ask you something. Do you not have the well of life in you? The well of life that never runs dry. Listen, the rivers are already in you. You don't need to get rivers. He that is the prince of life is in you. The author of life, the creator of life, the one who said, let there be, and there was. Listen to this. Jesus is in you. Rivers of living water are in you. What's wrong, Pastor Mike? Something is simply clogging the pipeline. That's all it is. You don't need to get born again again. Something, if you're born again, you've got rivers of living water. Rivers. Shout it. Rivers. Rivers in you. Why aren't they flowing, Pastor? Mike? They flowed out of Jesus. They flowed out of they were they, Peter had so many rivers where they just had to throw them by the by the river bank as Peter walked by and they were healed. Rivers of living water are in me. What's stopping them from flowing? My flesh. I'm out of the will of God somewhere. And the more I get into the will of God, the greater it is. Uh, in your house, you got different size pipes. You, you might have a, a, a half-inch pipe. If you got a quarter-inch pipe, you ain't getting much out of it. You might have a half-inch pipe. You might have a, 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 a one-inch pipe. You might have a three-inch pipe. You might have a ten-inch pipe. You ever see uh, when, the, when, when lots of rain come and there's a culvert and that thing is like a river coming out of the culvert? You know why it can carry so much water? Because that's how big the pipe is. I'm telling you, there is a place in God where Mike Yeager can get and you can get. Because I don't have to try to get rivers. They're in me. I just need to unclog the pipe that's supposed to let rivers come out of my belly. <laughs> You know, Patty, you unclog more of those pipes, and wherever you go, people start weeping and crying and wailing. You'll walk into Walmart, and people will fall down, and they'll go, oh, my God, Patty, you convict me, you convict me. And people say, well, I've known Patty's life. She can't convict. She couldn't convict a dead rock. Well, no, it's not you. It's Jesus in you. This really happened to me. I was really, really going after God right about 1999. A lot of things happen. It's in my books. If you want to know the truth of what really happened, because I never said a lot of things. I had a scaffolding set up here. I was working on the projector overhead. This evangelist, I've known him ever since I've been saved, comes walking in. I'm up there working. I don't feel holy. I don't feel, I don't feel anything because it's not a feeling. It's a position. This guy standing down there, he's staring at me. He got all shook up. And this is what he said to me. He said, my God, my God. He said, you convict me of sin. I said, what? I thought he lost his mind. I said, what? He said, you convict me of sin. He said, I've never known a holy man before. You know what I said to him? Nothing. I didn't know what he was talking about. When Moses came off Mount Sinai from spending time with God, he didn't even know he was glowing like a light bulb. They had to beg him to cover his face. Listen, don't try to convince people you're spiritual. Just begin to go after Jesus, and they will know it. Listen, we don't feel spiritual a lot of times, do we, Pete? These guys come on the property, and they're convicted. We're not preaching at them all day long, Ted. We're not trying to get them saved. We're just living life around them, and as God opens the door, we talk to them. They're coming to us and asking us to pray for them. 
I mean, men who've been in the world for years, asking us. I, I can't tell you how many times they've come in my office when I'm in there working on a book or praying or doing something, and they'll come in and say, oh, Pastor Mike, I really need prayer. Can you pray for my home? Can you pray for my son? My son is an alcoholic, and I don't want him to live a life I'm living, and I'll take him by the hand, and we'll both pray and get teary-eyed. And they'll be shaking as they walk out of my office. And I'm not trying to do that to them. I just, I just need to operate more in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout.